muted now. Can you hear me? Got you, Alex. Awesome. Sweet. All right. So you know how to share your screen here on Zoom? I, I am not a Zoom person, you know. Um, okay. This is actually my first time using Zoom. We, we okay. just, you know, I'm just a FaceTime type guy. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> if you have some charts to show uh, talking about your OTC issues that you uh, trade or invest in, it's a green drop box. It's a share screen. You'll see it up green there. Bottom. Green share bottom. Screen. Yeah. Okay. Share screen. Gotcha. And then you choose which screen or which window you want to share. Okay. Okay, so you guys can got see it. the yeah, we have uh, Sydney preview. resources. Yeah, got it. Sweet, Sydney resources. Okay, all right. so all right, so before we get to what you're doing in the markets right here, Alex, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got involved in trading, what you were doing before, and how you gravitated to uh, trading these kind of uh, uh, what do you call them, micro caps type of yeah, <laughs> micro micro caps. Something that have you guys ever had an OTC paint person on here? Uh, you know, I used to do some IR for um, you know, and most of those were you know bulletin board, pink okay. sheet issues. We've had plenty of OCD persons, but not OTCs. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, good, yeah, Steve. definitely. Yeah, um, and I remember that, you know, uh, that that uh, arena was fraught with all kinds of landmines. I, I remember that uh, owners of these companies would really use their stock uh, free trading and restrict it as currency to bring yes. in promotion yes, uh, yes. to generate volume so that uh, the owners of the company could raise cash. Is, yes. Does that still happen? Um, yes, not nearly okay. as much, but okay. yes. All right. This, wow. I mean, I guess the, I'll, I'll start with my journey, man. Cause I mean, okay. the, the OTC, you know, I, I think a lot of other people that aren't OTC, they call it the sewer, you know, um, <laughs> it's, it's the sewer of the market, you know? Yeah. Um, it's where everybody goes to, to honestly get in trouble and, you know, hide shit a lot of times and, and, and do sketchy stuff like you're saying, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll start with my journey and then I'll start to dive into all that because there's a really good reason I'm in OTC. Um, okay. Oh, and one thing before I forget, I, 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 you know, someone brought someone that I read okay. said that penny stock volume has completely exploded. I mean, it's 10 times like everything else uh, it has. has exploded. Um, so, you know, the, if you want to be Reddit and you want to, you know, uh, generate or, you know, move things, you would think these would be more of their candidates than big board stocks. Oh, yeah. And, and what's crazy about that, right, is what you're saying is, you know, they're targeting shorts, right? Anybody who's, who's a very heavy short percentage on a stock is what they're after. They don't really care what it is, right? It could be the biggest piece of crap, you know? Yeah. So the great thing about these OTCs, a lot of people don't know, is these are the heavily shortest stocks that exist in the market, period. And the reason is, is because... You know, the algos, the market makers, they know 99% of them are complete crap and they're diluting constantly. The CEOs are selling shares constantly. So what do they right. do? They're, they, they have extreme short percentages on these 100% of the time. So okay. when I remember have, that too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so when yeah. you have someone in that step in like that, it destroys them, you know, and that's how you can get these crazy squeezes. You know, like moves in the OTC of 100 to 200 percent in one day on a stock have become very normal. And yeah. I mean, we're talking pretty good volume, too. I mean, it's not the how it used to be at all. In the last year, it's changed dramatically. Um, but yeah, so I, COVID, I got, COVID has been a boom for this uh, arena. 
I think so because they're cheap. They're cheap options for people to make extra money. Okay. I think All so. Right. All right. You so know? let's get back to your uh, roads less traveled. All right. So, All right. Um, you know, my family's always been kind of involved in financial stuff. You know, my brother, he was a very smart guy and he's a lot older than me. He's 15 years older than me growing up. Um, I grew up in a, in a, in a much older family. My dad's 80. I'm only 28 to give you an idea. Wow. Um, okay. And, you know, my brother was doing stocks back then, you know, when he was in his late twenties, early thirties, when I was 15 and, you know, I, I, I called an interest in it and he signed me up for a custodial account, um, called buy and hold.com. If you guys remember that back then, I mean, that would have been, you know, back in the early two thousands or so that that website, the broker yeah. back then, I don't even know if they're around anymore. Um, and, you know, I think the first stock I ever bought was Starbucks and I was just messing around trying to learn how to do things. And eventually what it involved evolved into was this, right? You know, I've always been a research kind of guy and I was just online researching. And I, I, I honestly, I came across a, a really terrible known website in the OTC called iHub. Okay. Investors okay. Hub. Okay. And Investors Hub is a, is a forum-based website that has pretty much every OTC company that exists. And at a very young age, I just dived right into it, man. You know, I got obsessed with it, you know, obsessed with researching these companies that people were calling startups. You know, that's what they were referred to as these are the ultimate startup opportunities because this is the bottom of the barrel, you know, you, Small caps are not the bottom of the barrel. These are because these are the guys that are trying to get the small cap. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. Um, it's always a big accomplishment uh, for any of these uh, to be listed um, on NASDAQ, for example. It, that, that was their yes. dream, right? Yes. And what, one out of a 500 make it one out of a thousand. Yeah, maybe if, okay. if that, and you know, <laughs> honestly, most of the time for, for nine out of the 10 of the companies, I think they use it as a pump, you know, I'm not going to lie. Right. Right. Um, and then, you know, that's obviously a hard road and it takes a lot of money to do it. And these companies just don't have the money to do it. it is, is the honest truth as to why a lot of them don't make it. They're just normal guys, man. Like a lot of these guys work at car dealerships and, and, you know, they're just yeah. normal people, you know, but they're yeah. CEOs at the same time. Yeah. Okay. I got it. So, right. you know, my journey continued up until I was about 18, 19. And, and I ran into the issue that every teenager had in stocks, at least that wanted to do them. I was like, I got no money. I have no money. I'm broke. You know, I was working as a bus boy at the time to try to make some extra money to just do this. And yeah. at the time I was, I was growing up in Baltimore, Maryland, you know, I was, I was not someone who had money. My family's not someone who had money, but we tried to do it make it happen. So what I ended up doing to, you know, make money is I joined the military to join the army. And, okay. um, that was the only way I could figure out how to, you know, successfully save money to, to do my dream of, of, of trying to do these stocks. And, and I, and I did it. I, I, not only that, I signed up for one of the more dangerous jobs in the military because they offered up a, a, a fat signing bonus, you know, if I was able to pass the school, and, you know, everything went well and I got my signing bonus and, and, and that's what, that's what started everything. I put every single dollar that I made from signing up for the army and most of the money I made during the army, um, into my brokerage account. And wow. yeah. And, did you, uh, were you deployed? Alex? I did deploy. I did deploy. Yes. And I was, um, I was stationed with a, it, it was a rough journey. I, I was stationed with a military corrections unit. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you know, and you're, uh, you were like, a, you were, you had to go out and arrest people like an MP or. Uh, um, or you when know, we were you know, in the States, yes. But our job over there is we were actually the ones that were uh, working in the prisons the Taliban were kept in. Okay, so um, you were in Afghanistan. That is correct, yeah. Yeah, I, I'd say that was, uh, yeah, uh, risky yeah. duty. Yeah, <laughs> go, go ahead, buddy. 
which so which, you, yeah, you it, definitely it, had the bravery to be a trader if you could do that um you know uh i i wasn't that brave i was glad i had a good lottery number during the vietnam days so um, oh. okay so you know really um you know admirable uh that you you know would take that type of risk just to have trading capital is i've never heard a story like this before so go ahead oh yeah you know and 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 that's what it was i was i was very much in a you know the job i signed up for originally was um eod explosive ordnance disposal which is bomb squad yeah and and a lot of people refer to it as the most dangerous job in the military and that's the only way i could get the money i needed the signing bonus and, okay. you know, I ended up getting stationed with the military corrections unit, like I told you. And, uh, you know, I spent um, four years with them until I was hurt. You know, I got injured and I was eventually discharged. But what was so what was so crazy about my story is what I was mainly doing the whole time I was in the military in the OTC. Right. This would have been between the years of 2012 and 2015, primarily. OK. OK. And. What was happening back then was the green rush in the OTC. And okay. anybody who's familiar with the green rush, it was the marijuana stocks. Okay. And all right. that is where I was funneling all the money I was making in the military the whole time was into these marijuana stocks. You know, and back then it was H E M P P H O T, the famous ones like E R B B, the ones people know that went crazy heights. And I was buying these things at bottom, man. It was like, you know, a third of a penny, half of a penny. Um, some of them were even in trips. You know, we're talking decimal point zero zero one of a share. Um, and what ended up happening was the green rush. You know, Washington and Colorado went legal. And yeah the the stocks just i mean it was like nothing i don't think anybody's ever seen in their life it was probably similar to the crypto, crypto? stocks recently oh, yes yeah okay and we're talking stocks went from half a penny to dollars and we're 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 saying they i'm saying they went there fast with with volume that would blow your mind you know and that which wasn't a lot of money to, uh, you know, people in, in stocks, you know, but my 50,000, a hundred thousand that I saved up back then in the army and was sticking in those marijuana stocks at such low price points, it changed, it changed everything for me. And it all happened right around the same time I was injured in the military and discharged. And it, it the story has always been kind of weird to me, you know, um, how everything timed itself so well uh, i was discharged in the military in 2015 um right after the second green rush in 2014 and the otc ended which is when pretty much everything changed for me financially and i was able to finally continue on my journey i guess the best way to put it and and you did you take some of that money i went to your twitter account and i see you, you own some type of mine you did you bought a mine Yes. Yes. That's in the last few years, that's really where my love has gone, you know, is, is, is mining gold, silver, copper. Yeah. You know, I understand the future for it and where we're heading. Okay. You know? All right. So you have a resource stock uh, up here, right? Yes. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is Sydney resources. And, and let me say, congratulations. You should write a book about this. <laughs> yeah, okay. a lot. Of, yeah, a lot of people told me that. You know, maybe one day. You yeah, know, I thought about it. Um. So yeah, this right here is Sydney Resources, and and this is an OTC Pink stock. Okay, so OTC Pink is like their first tier, I guess, in their marketplace. You know, their lowest tier. They go from OTC Pink, and if they attempt an up list, they go to QB, is what they call it. OTC QB. So OTC Pink is like their first tier of their marketplace. And that's where that's where Sydney Resources is present. And and I've been invested with them since right back in here, you know, right back in August is is when we me and my investors got involved. And, and that's what's really diff, different about us in the OTC. And what's a little bit different about my journey, I guess, is a lot of people trade these things. 
people call me crazy because I actually invest in these things. And, and that's what's different about me a lot in the OTC than I guess most people you would find. Um, and I, because, I, I'll let well, you ask the question. It's because you had the, the paradigm of being an investor when you were in the military and you saw the outcome. And look, I know I'm a trader. You know how many mm -hmm. times I, I bought Bitcoin near the bottom, but I traded it. OK. Yes. And, and uh, I always had a trading psychology. So for me to uh, and it's really the toughest thing is, a, you know, a good trade is great, but a good hold is really one of the most difficult things to do that I think that's why most people trade. Um, yes. It's very hard to have the discipline that when you have a lot of money made, not to just take it, you know, and turn it into it's not a profit till you take it. So yeah. if you're taught those things, um, you really have to fight yourself to just stay in it for the long term. I mean, some of these huge moves, I say this, um, either you have to be greedy or naive, but you know <laughs> what, uh, to still be there. But oh, yeah. you know what, uh, uh, you're, you're showing me a different side of it, that you, you don't have to be greedy and naive. You just have to have the paradigm and belief system that um, is longer than, you know, two weeks or a month or two months and, exactly. uh, and have done it. So it, once you've done it, um, it's easier to repeat it. So congratulations on that front too, to be able to do that. It's not easy. Yeah. And I think that's really what sparked everything is, you know, I saw what happened in the green rush, um, which had happened twice. It happened, you know, in early 2011, 2012, very going to happen again in 2014. Um, I think that's what really opened my eyes to what is possible in the OTC. I saw these stocks go on major uptrends for a year plus from pennies to dollars. And I'm like, this, this is, this can change people's lives. But not only that, it can change the normal person's life. They can put $500 into this at the bottom, wake up six months to a year later, and their life has changed. That's what's great about the OTC. You know, those are the great parts. But there's also a lot of bad parts, you know, of course. Yeah. Um, I've done those. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. So uh, it's, uh, uh, I mean, the marijuana stocks uh, recently since the election, you know, till Ray 5 to 50, um, you know, there there's another green rush going on after they got clobbered for a few years. And now they've all really come to life. Uh, but our metals, uh, you're this is MJ. okay. All right. So uh, I kind of think that you're, um, there's a true more focus on things with intrinsic value, like anything that comes out of the ground now is where you're hunting for opportunities. You know, so for when it comes to OTC, a lot of what I do, to be honest, is sector related, right? Industry related, sector related. You know, what I look yeah. for is, you know, so what, what's hot right now in, in the market is metals and miners, right? So what's right. going to what's gonna replicate to the OTC is the same thing. And okay. we, we saw the same thing with electric vehicles. I'll show you. Um, this is another big investment of ours. Electric vehicle company in the OTC. Okay. As you know, on big boards, electric vehicles companies, you know, they've been bananas. And you, you can see the same replication here on an OTC stock. It, it, it all goes down. You know, it's, it's, it's one stream. It, you know, they all follow each other. You know, yeah. um, it, it's just about quality. Like this right here, for example, I have been in this since way down here. All of my followers know that. Everybody on Twitter knows that. I've made it public. That's where I told everybody, you know, hey. We're doing this. And I, I, I'm still I'm still here. We're, we're still here. You'll still see me talking about it every day. And the reason is it, it, something like this. Right. It took me an extreme amount of research it is what it comes down to these OTCs. You know, um, this one, for example, a big thing to me is zero debt. I'm not looking at assets. I'm not really looking at, you know, are they making money if they have cash, stuff like that. The main thing I'm always worried about first is debt. Cause like what, like you brought up to me first, 
you said I always I always heard about CEO selling shares, shares being converted. That's where I always got screwed. And that's where most people get screwed, you know, is, yeah. is debt issues. Um, okay. So how about the, uh, is float and outstanding shares important to you too? Yes, big time. So, and that's okay. another example of this one right here is, is GWS though is a 32 million OS, I believe. And then their float is only 3.2 million shares, very tiny. So, you know, it doesn't take a lot of volume, which is important in the OTC when you don't have as much as big board. Um, it didn't take a lot of volume to move this thing to crazy heights. You okay, know? well, let me ask you this. The high volume days, um, was there news on those days? Uh, you know, I'm looking at, you know, maybe like, towards the end right of here. last year in December. Yeah. Huge volume there. Yes. And then all the way back. Uh, what was it? Uh, they put out a press release. So most, if I part. remember correctly, this right here, this would have been their press releases on their electric vehicle conversion. And they, they were, they put in uh, the main thing GWSO is doing is they're producing a battery that doesn't use lithium. It uses sodium instead. And that's why their stock's been going crazy. Um, they have two patents right now that are in application status um, for this battery. And they, they have a genius CEO. His name is Dr. Vladimir Vasilenko. He has a long history of patents. And he tried to do this EV thing back in 07, 08 with Global Warming Solutions. And, um, you know, I think like most, he was early in the game, right? And he, he, he failed back then. And if you actually look, you can see it. Yeah. This is when he tried before. And here we are now. Were there reverse splits on the failure? I believe so. Yeah. Or That's maybe what one kills you. Yeah. 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 Yep. Okay. Which All is right. what you see a lot in OTC. You see recycling you see reattempts you see revivals and that's what gwso was it was a revival it was a reattempt of a past project and that's why if you know what you're doing you can make life-changing money right i knew ev was going to be a hot thing again in the otc because of what was happening in big board so what do i do as a a person who loves research i go on otc scanners and I look into everybody who was ever involved in EV in the OTC, you know, in its past. And who do I find? I find Vladimir Vasilenko. And what do I figure out? He's in the process of reviving GWSO way down here. So I'm able to catch a major move early is the goal. Okay. Um, how about, um, do you get it wrong? At times, Alex, and nothing happens, or they go yeah. BK. Oh yeah, uh, and course. and how do you manage risk and decide how much of a commitment you're going to make to these shares? Do you have any kind of discipline or formula, or it's really just um, subjective, self-directed, uh, depending upon you know what kind of uh, conviction you have. You know, and 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 see, that's what that's that that's what's crazy about the OTC, right? Is it, it's a wild West, you know, I get, I get questions all the time. Like, what are your price targets? You know, how high are you riding this thing? How high do you expect it to go? It, that's like the same people who asking, you know, how, how high do you think GameStop's going to go as it's squeezing? Right. I, I don't, know. don't know. I mean, yeah. yeah, it could, this, this stock we're looking at right now, GWSO, it has no debt and has a 3 million float. If the volume keeps coming in and they stay clean, as in they aren't clearing any shares, this stock realistically could go to 30 to 50 if they don't do anything stupid, if it keeps getting the volume. But I don't know. So what do I always suggest to people on, on journeys like this is always be clearing shares out. Sell, sell little chunks on these big green days, you see. You see this? Yeah. You see this? Partial see profits. This. Yeah. Yes. Cover your ass. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, you're, you're an interesting guy. So, what kind of what kind of mine did you buy, Alex? So, the one you probably saw in my picture, um, that's the Midnight Owl mine. 
in Arizona. And, you know, it's a past producing gold and copper mine, but where they, uh, the thing, the thing I love about that one in particular is um, way back in the twenties and thirties when it was in production is they were only after copper mainly back then. And um, what my, I work with a, a great guy from the BLM, Bureau of Land Management, he's Steven Cyros. And what we figured out through XRF readings, which is how you figure out how much, you know, a, a broad spectrum of how much gold, silver, minerals are in the ground. Yeah. Um, we found that they were mainly after copper back then. And that's yeah, mainly- Arizona known for that. Yes. Right. And what we found in that particular mine is that there were 13 ounces per ton of gold readings present, which if you have any familiarity is massive. I mean, it's incredibly high grade. Um, and what that tells us is most likely they were literally just ignoring it. They were, they were stripping the, the mine of copper and ignoring the gold, which is interesting. Yeah, so um, I just want to get back to OTC just for a minute. And you mentioned yeah. the guy who was behind this uh, EV stop. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll so you, you bet on the jockey a lot of the I, time, right? I bet on the CEOs. I bet yeah, on the so, share structures. I bet on. Right, okay. I bet on the story, you know? I bet on Because I know a lot of guys that were like mining analysts. And before Mux, everyone went with every deal McEwen would do. Okay. Okay. You know what I mean, so they were, I call it like betting on the jockey um, because they've done it before they could repeat it again in their next deal. And um, what an interesting interview, Alex, I'm, I'm glad I reached out to you. And, you know, this is an arena that uh, you really do need um, expertise uh, before you start taking risks. So I, I saw your websites under construction. So, Yep. Uh, and and me, that is go ahead. That is because I'm I'm actually retiring uh, at the end of the year. This is my last year in the OTC. Um, um and, and that's why I have the website under construction. All that's gonna be a part of what's coming in 2022. Um I'm I'm heading towards the gold mining space primarily. And okay. um right now we have 14 mines that were past producing that are completely 100 percent owned. I own the deeds. And um, our goal is to start working towards that in 2022. Dave, uh, and next yeah. reason we should bring him back. <laughs> yeah. I'm not yeah. kidding. I'm yeah. very serious. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah I, I think that you're, uh, you know, one of those gems that uh, I find on Twitter that aren't, you know, the most, uh, you know, have t tons of followers, but uh, you're a wealth of uh, knowledge and your story is inspiring. And if you ever need an IR guy for your gold mines, uh, my phone number is da 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 da. da. <laughs> anyway, uh, Alex, really pleasure meeting you. And uh, you know, since you're not retiring for another year, maybe we could get back together this spring and uh, talk about what you're seeing again. But yeah. for now, the best way for people to stay in touch is what? Do you have a room, or do you have uh, just your Twitter? Handle. Yeah, you know, we're I'm on Twitter every day. And we also we also were in Discord. I have about 1500 people in a, in a, in a Discord group right now. And okay. and it's really cool, you know, um, like GWSO, for instance, the EV company you're looking at in my Discord, I have every single OTC stock we're invested in. And then if you click on the OTC stock in my Discord, I mean, you'll see pages upon pages of research on GWSO, on why I invested in this, why we're still here, you know, the whole reasoning behind everything. I mean, I put, I put months and months of research into these things and that's why we invest in them because I mean, the, the dedication that goes behind these things is incredible. You I know it's impossible. In. Yeah. I know it's impossible, but um, what happens to these issues if we ever have a bear market? I know it's impossible, but if we ever mm -hmm. have a bear market, um, and here's Alex's, uh, at Sunnyland24 is his um, Twitter handle. And um, so you could get a hold of Alex there. But what do you think? I mean, look, the Fed's been loose, pumping money. Everyone's, you know, everything's rallying. 
Uh, yeah. You could almost, you know, it's crypto, it's commodities, it's tech, it's marijuana. Find a bear trend in anything is challenging. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what happens if uh, we enter a bear market? <laughs> I get that question a lot about the OTC, and you know, it's 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 always been a tougher question for me to even answer, right? Because how long have we been in a bull market since since I? Yeah, I know, right? Since I've been a kid, you know. Yeah, 19, like, before you were born, 1982 was the birth of this one. Exactly. So so what do I do when I get asked questions like that in the OTC? I go to the older OTC guys than me, and I'll, I'll tell you what they say. Well, I'm one of the oldest guys you'll ever meet in the industry, <laughs> so you could always ask me. But, uh, yeah, if liquidity dries up, um, it's not good news. You could own the best stock in a bad market. It wouldn't matter. Yeah, so make what hay I, while the sun shines, bro. What I've always been told about OTC, you know, and, and I don't want anybody to take this because I haven't seen it myself, you know, so take it with a grain of salt is is the OTC when when big board, big mark is correct. The OTC actually gets spikes because people circulate to a oh. cheaper arena. Interesting. Yeah. OK, well, so it might work. actually be a hedge, maybe. OK. Okay, so I'm putting uh, Alex's Twitter up there in chat, and I want to thank you very much uh, uh, for you know telling, sharing your journey with us and uh, your success, and uh, that you're retiring. And how old are you? I'm 28 right now, and you're retiring. Okay, well, I'm I'm after this interview, I'm going to have to stay away from rope and razor blades. Okay. <laughs> retiring to go into gold mining. I'm retiring right. from the OTC, not retiring. Right. I know. I'm, I'm kidding you, man. I got anyway, I, really, you know, when you, you go through an interview with me, you become my trading warrior brother, even though you're an investor, <laughs> not a trader. So really nice meeting you, Alex. And uh, nice let's you. do it again, maybe in May. How about then? Yes, May sounds great. I actually had a lot of fun. It was, it was great being on here, you know, and I, and I enjoy showing people the OTC because a lot of people just, they have no idea. Yeah, it that's exists. why, you know, uh, that's what we do here. We're, uh, we edify traders, investors every day by bringing in good content like you. Thanks for having a giving spirit and sharing it today, Alex. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This is great. All right, buddy. All right. I told you we'd have fun too, right? <laughs> yeah yeah all right so uh, okay so uh it was great chatting with you that's a wrap everybody we'll see you tomorrow i have charlie gasparino with us tomorrow and we're going to ask charlie some tough questions so um everyone uh you could join blake and the team for phase 2.0 members only uh you're welcome alex people really enjoyed it so you'll probably you. be getting some new followers after today that's and awesome. we already have some people that follow you that are in here. So okay. that's a wrap. Take care, Alex. Good hunting, buddy.